Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. How are you? Oh, my goodness. I'm good. How are you? I was watching it since you started live. Oh, geez. So, you know, I've had so much to say in the last two <laughs> right. minutes, but I was trying to you figure know, it out. You did like rallying with the screen. Yeah. You did like rain delay coverage. You basically <laughs> filled till I till I came up there. Well, it's funny you bring up the rain delay coverage because I have a question about that later yes. for you. But right. first, I want to check in. You feeling okay? Is the family feeling okay? Look at this. I mean, ball cap today, three days growth. I've shaved twice since I saw you last week in Tampa. So give the face a little break. But uh, yeah, that's about it. We're good. You know, my wife and I are hunkered down here. It's all good. We popped out today real quick, do some errands, uh, found some toilet paper, surprisingly. Nice. And uh, just came back home do, doing it, this with you. Is it still crazy there? Are the stores just absolutely mobbed? Or are people staying out of the stores? How is it up there? It's not crazy, crazy. We're in Connecticut. Um, but you do see, like, yesterday we went down the paper aisle, and they actually had some napkins. Uh, they must have just gotten in a supply of, I wouldn't say toilet paper, probably paper towels. But today we walked in, wiped out again. Nothing. So little little tip, I probably shouldn't give this away, but you know, if you go into like a gas station sometimes where you wouldn't normally think they have paper goods, they might have paper goods. So you might get lucky. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Or like a Dollar Tree or something like that. I don't know if you guys have those up there or not in Connecticut. Uh, we do. We do actually. Yeah. I, w I went there for hand sanitizer and they had a bunch. So, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, we got yeah. them, we got them out of some old amenity kits that we had from flying. And they actually oh. have them in the old amenity kits. That's a good idea. Yeah. I probably have like 20 of those in the <laughs> right. closet I have yet to clean out despite. <laughs> having nothing to do over the last five days. Now, yeah. have you tackled any house projects or anything so far? We've had a lot of conversations about it. Yeah. <laughs> Noodles, I got to get one of my cats away from the camera here. Noodles, scoot. We have three cats, by the way. What Where kind of cats? cats? Uh, what would you say he is? Like a. Hi, Donna. Know. Come on in. Hi, Meredith. Hi, Donna. How are you doing? <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. You? Good, good. Hanging in there. Good. Good to hear. Stay Stay home. This guy. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting a little dicey at home in our self-quarantine. Like, yeah, <laughs> How do you know you're getting on each other's nerves? Like, what's the tell? Uh, what would be the tell? Probably... Well, I can hear you breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Although breathing is so necessary. All right, Garrett, the rest the of this, I'm just going to hold my breath. <laughs> it'll be like that till July, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, that'll be fine. That'll work. Now, you know what you know what's funny though, what we do do? I've gotten sucked a little bit into her vortex of like Vanderpump rules and a couple of those types of shows. And it and and what I found is that we watched uh, Love is Blind on Netflix. I, I just saw I just saw the finale. Yeah. I watched it this morning. And uh, I, I find we do a lot of screaming at the television. He does a lot of screaming. I do. I do. Now, like, do you why have... are you saying that? Why are you doing that? Get her off the screen. Now, do you understand the blonde-haired girl that clearly wasn't into the guy, but then yes. tried to convince herself she was into the guy, and then yes. went to the altar, yes. Yes. said, I love you, and then said, but I don't want to marry you? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, she was that She was that ultimate, like, villain. Like, there's a couple on Vanderpump Rules that I would say are villains. She was that one where you're watching and you're just going, nope, nope, nope. Don't do it. And the guy kept trying to convince himself. Poor young Mark, 24 years old. Now you could t you could tell from the outside it was not happening there. 100. Yeah. percent Yeah. Right. Now, oh, yeah. So you guys do your she's, thing. She's gonna go do some cat wrangling. Yes. Yeah. No. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Vanderpump Rules, Bob. Which yeah. restaurant would you be most likely to go to, sir? I would go to Sir Tom. To those two guys, the Tom Toms, they drive me bananas. Not feeling it. No, everything's just so dramatic. And I realize it's a reality show, but I'm like, dudes, come on. You know, they, they drive me nuts. I'd go to Sir. Tom Sandoval or Tom Schwartz? Who would you rather be quarantined with? It sounds like neither, but you have to pick. <laughs> uh, ooh. Schwartz. Schwartz? Yeah, because Sandoval just his voice and its inflection drives me crazy. It's throw a foam brick at the TV. Sorry, Tom, if you're listening. <laughs> who's, who's more annoying? 
What's her name? Lala or Stassi? Uh, of the two for me, Lala. But the one that's most annoying is Kristen. Oh, yeah. She's bad, too. She's just trouble every single show. Every show, she tries yeah. to, like, meddle in something and then pretends that she didn't do anything wrong. Right. And then says, you're not my friend, you're not my friend. And the minute they try and talk to her, she talks over them. And it's, yeah, it's not good. She was, she's the Jessica from Love is Blind of that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, any other somewhat, you know, good, bad shows, almost like guilty pleasures that you're diving into during this time? Yeah, you know what? We started um, the... Uh, Aquafina is Nora from Queens on Comedy Central. Oh, She's so that. talented. She is very funny. They got a really good cast around her, so give that a shot. And I'll tell you on the flip side of that, so St. Patrick's Day the other day, right? Nobody's going out, so we stayed home. And they had, like, the Leprechaun series on some of the movies channel, movie channels. 1993, Jennifer Aniston was one of the two leads between the guy that played the little leprechaun. Really? And uh, just, a, just a silly, crazy movie. You know, that. The typical 90s horror movie where they knock the leprechaun down and they're like, is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. It's all over. And then he immediately bounces up and starts biting somebody's ear off. Yeah. yeah. You're like, no, put five more bullets into him. Give that a shot. So they you're screaming. Did. These put damn kids more. never learn. <laughs> I can't about, watch what, any. How about you? What have you been watching? I can't watch any horror movies. If I watch a horror what? movie, I'll be I'll be making a barricade at my door convinced somebody's trying to steal <laughs> Newsflash, no one's trying to steal me. Nobody, yes. nobody wants what's, that. <laughs> so what's the scariest movie you, you've ever seen? Um, I mean, I've like, been roped into them before. Yeah. I went to see or somebody made me watch, not made me, but, you know, uh, what was it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Oh, yeah. With the with Jessica Biel, not the right. first. I know that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember loving that. Um, what else? I haven't seen pretty much any of the the classic oh, Silence of the Lambs. I okay. watched that. Yeah. Um, I mean, like not like Friday the Thirteenth or Halloween or. I don't remember seeing any of those because I just okay. I know that I don't like them. I'm I'm not a big fan of anything that has a lot of like uh, religious or satanic. Okay. It just feels like you always hear the stories about when they're on the movie set and weird things happen, like The Omen. Yeah. Um, Exorcist. It just feels a little too. What the the one that the the doll Annabelle? Those things can get a little scary. Yeah. Uh, no thanks. Give it a try. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. All by that's, yourself. That's what I need to be out. doing. I, I not only need to be paranoid about the coronavirus. I need to be paranoid that <laughs> yes. somebody from the supernatural is also going. Hey, to kill hey, me. we're just trying to we're trying to get your attention off the, of what's going on. You know what I'm really <laughs> waiting for? What? I'm waiting for Sunday to roll around because 90 Day Fiance is on. Have you oh. watched 90 Day Fiance ever? No, is that a, I know what the show is. Is it a new season or something? Yes, well, the, I feel like there's always a new season, but it's towards the beginning of a season and they essentially go and a lot of people meet online and they've never even really met in person and they wind up getting engaged right away. And then they have 90 days once they get their K-1 visa to get married or else the other person has to go back to their respective country. Oh, wow. It's crazy, like it's pretty nuts. Yeah. You might wanna check that one out. Okay, and you said there's been one season of that? So um, there's like another 10 one? seasons of that. You could really oh. dive. But uh, there's a newer season. That's on Sunday nights, I believe. Okay, all right. You uh, believe, no, you're people, like, it's already written down. Yeah, shockingly, um, no, I did not get the virus that I know of, thankfully, but I am yeah. trying to practice, uh, you know, some social distancing, kind of self-quarantining if I can. I go out for walks sometimes. Uh, but no, thank you for your concern. I have been healthy. So hopefully that continues and hopefully everybody else is doing their part uh, to flatten the curve. But there are some people that are clearly asking Yankees questions because, you know, sure. for the Yes Network. Uh, did you see the news with Aaron Judge today? I did not because, as I told you, I was out running errands. I just yeah. got home and we fired this up. So what do you got? So we still have a couple reporters that are outside of GMS. Brian Hope being one of them. Christy Ackert is there as well. I think Pete Caldera is still there, too. Um, but he apparently had his rib checked again because he had that fractured rib. Yep. They're showing a little bit of signs of healing there, but he also revealed that he had essentially a collapsed lung, which is kind of really? wild. Yeah, which is kind of wild. That's serious. I'm just, so. It's better, I'm assuming. But it's better now, okay. yeah. So I heard that and I was like, wow, that's nuts. So hopefully yeah. he's okay and he continues to heal, but they did say he is able to fly now 
with that young, with that lung, apparently there was an issue if he had gone right away. They wanted to make oh, sure yeah. that he was healthy. But, you know, you hope that, that the rib continues to heal and he doesn't need a surgery. But do you think the Yankees are a team that, you know, could potentially be healthy by the time this season starts, if the season yeah. starts? It's a little crazy, isn't it? The yeah. standards getting better, judges getting better. You're going to have Paxton a lot closer to coming back. I mean, it's 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 weird the way things work out, and I'm sure there was no you know divine intervention to say, well, let's let these players get healthy so we you know we can play. But you know, coincidentally, yeah. I mean, it seems like some guys are going to be a lot closer to being back. Now, I'll let you be the great prognosticator. When do you think the season is going to start? Do you think the season is going to start? I do believe the season's going to start. I mean, again, it really comes down to us, right? As Americans doing what we can to just yeah. knock this thing out over the next week or not really week, probably two weeks to a month and then see where we go from there. Um, I like the projections now of mid-May. That's probably hopeful at this point. Uh, but I'd love to see any time between then and, you know, June 1st. Again, just kind of see seeing where this goes. We're seeing cases kind of peak now in some places, hopefully. Again. I'm being optimistic because just because I want to see baseball. Of course. And you like <laughs> like many Americans that are at home and not working in their typical capacity, I know we both want to go back to work as yeah. well. So uh, yeah. we can't work if there's not Yankees baseball. So like everyone else out there, we are hoping there's some Yankees baseball. Now, you've been at the Yes Network for how many years now? I've been there since the start in 2002. They flipped the switch in March, mm -hmm. and I joined them in June of that year. So... What is that, eight, 18, 19 years? What was it like the first time that you... Uh-oh, he's frozen. There he is. Oh. <laughs> what, what was it? You did, you said, did like the I, Max Headroom thing on yeah. me. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I said when you, when you first took the anchor desk for the first time, when you sat behind the desk at Yes, what was that whole thing like? Because I heard the first year was kind of crazy, constantly yeah. wondering if you guys were going to be on the air. Right. It was obviously that first year we weren't on cable vision. Uh, mm -hmm. but we still had a, a good audience. We did hour-long pregame shows. Uh, we didn't have nearly as many sponsors as we had now, so we had to fill a lot of content for an hour. And we basically, covering Yankees games, had what was Fred Hickman at the time as the anchor, and then the field reporter, which at the time was Susan Waldman. So it was a lot of content having to come from these different sources. And of course, we have producers doing pieces to enhance the shows, that sort of thing. Yeah, but I remember coming in in June, I filled in for Fred on a three-game series. And it was it was different, you know, especially that post-game show, because the pregame, as you know, is at least moderately scripted. There was no Jack Curry back then. There was no John Flaherty in the studio. It was just the anchor. And I did that for a variety of years after I took over for Fred. Until we added that next layer. Um, so it was a lot of the anchor, the talking head. And then the post game was different because I, I hadn't done post games per se. I'd done some TNT stuff that was some NBA post game kind of freewheeling but there's always somebody on set with me there wasn't so there was a debrief of susan at the time and finding out what was going on in the clubhouse interviews that she'd done that sort of thing but it was it was really different back then compared to what it is now yeah craziest thing that happened that first year or just in the early years of yes um i remember well a, a couple of things one remember when they played in japan well, I think yes. it was in 2004 yeah. or whatever. Um, and Fred was doing Mets basketball. No, I'm sorry. Fred was doing the Japanese uh, stuff, anchoring the Yankees coverage. So I came in and did the Nets. So I was on the normal schedule. And all of these crew members were coming in and doing those shows. It was at like 2, 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. It was this bizarre kind of around-the-clock programming. And then I would probably say the one time that the actual – audio from the stadium just suddenly boom done and i had to run upstairs and do play-by-play -play from the set oh, so, wow. but with us you know our techs are so good that so rarely happens especially with the technology today but it happened and it was a little weird and yeah and then i do remember and you'll you'll get a kick out of this because you know like jack and i will wear like jeans to the studio or whatever yeah. um but it was so some of the guys wear shorts uh, but it was so hot 
one summer and the air conditioning went out in the building that we were doing stuff for the studio. It had to be like a hundred degrees. So it was the one time, it was about a three day period where Jack and I wear like shorts. So we had like golf shorts, shirt, tie, jacket, the whole thing. But it was, yeah. One, oh, of, the people, was, one of the people that's watching right now said, how do you decide what candy goes in your candy jars that everybody steals from? <laughs> you know, they're, per, they're pretty consistent uh, with the M&Ms. I do regular M&Ms, peanut M&Ms, caramel, peanut butter M&Ms, Reese's peanut butter cups of both regular dark chocolate and white chocolate variety. Ooh, a York, peppermint, chocolate. York peppermint patties. These are all the ones that I've gleaned over the years that people really like. Twizzlers are a huge hit. I've added those to the table. And then the other one is Skittles. Glenn Giangrande, who's our researcher, writer extraordinaire. He, I don't know what his, his senior writer, I believe now. Um, he loves Skittles. So I always make sure there's Skittles on the table. I almost feel like you should set up a little thing at home right now because you probably missed your little office setup. <laughs> your little candy jars and your little scooper things and, you know, make it feel more like home. Now, do you miss Bob, or not Bob, you are Bob. You miss uh, Jack in class <laughs> during this time? Do Sometimes you know I'm not myself. Uh, we've tried to stay in contact, but yeah, I, I miss seeing him. It's so weird, you know. It's funny because our lives, and the same with you, is you're around these people in these concentrated pockets for six, seven months. And then on that last day, it's like, all right, bye. And then you see each other again. You occasionally over the dinner, you see each other, you go out for dinner, some event or a hot stove comes up. And then after a hot stove, they disappear again. So it's, yeah, I do miss them. It's always nice being around those guys and having that. You know what else, Mark Meredith? It's like, and I'm sure people everywhere are feeling this now. If they're in quarantine or they're away from work, you, it's nice to be away to an extent, but you miss the routine that yeah. you build when the season comes. We don't have that right now. What What is your daily routine in semi-quarantine? Uh, let's see, wake up, coffee. You know what I've noticed? Well, I'm always kind of a um, late to bed anyway. I'm a night owl, mm -hmm. but our day has shifted. Like we used to get up earlier, now we'll get up later. And it's like coffee, and then read the paper, see what's going on, maybe check the news, given given everything that's going on, and then see if we need to run some errands. The home projects is a big thing, because we were like, supposed to get some paint today to paint one room in the basement. That didn't quite come to fruition. So no. <laughs> that remains on the to-do list, as is cleaning closets, as is uh, cleaning rooms. We, we have a lot of stuff we kind of probably need to do an edit. Let's put it that way. All of those things. No painting here, yeah. but all of those things. Cleaning closets, doing laundry. I have a broken garbage disposal that some dude that I used to date said he was going to fix. Bob, he never fixed that. <laughs> so maybe this is my time to shine. Yeah. That you know what, can, you, can you fix it? Or if nothing else, can you just go buy one and, re and install the new one yourself? Well, that's what I have. I actually had bought one, and oh. I think it's I think it's the right one. We didn't even check if it's the right one. Oh, he <laughs> was supposed to install it, and that didn't. I got gotcha. you. Things things didn't work out, Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but maybe that'll be a video that I do. Uh, how long does it take me to install a garbage yeah. disposal? <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't want to watch that? That's quality right. content. It was supposed to be 30 minutes Insta Live. It turned into like four hours and a lot of you screaming and right. directions going everywhere and tools flying. Um, you, there have, are... you have a good, by the way, this is an important question now. You're, you're down there in your own place. Do you have your own tool set, your own toolkit to do repairs if you need to? I have like random tools. So I have like maybe like a screw, like a couple, like a screwdriver yeah. and a wrench. Like I don't have <laughs> a proper tool set like I should. My right. tool set is generally, hello, can you please come, blah, 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 and just have somebody come and do it. Uh, so no, that actually could be the biggest part of this garbage disposal challenge, uh, finding tools <laughs> to actually do it. Unless I'm like sitting there trying to like get it off with my teeth. I don't think that's a- Yeah, you're trying to use like a butter, a butter knife as a screwdriver, no. right? You're and then I'll be like all bloody and I'll have to go, we can go get stitches <laughs> or something crazy. And I'm like, what were you right. doing? <laughs> Thought I could be handy. Now, uh, a couple questions from some people that wrote in early. Also, Valencia yep. said hi. Hi, V. <laughs> um, can you? Oh wait, no, that was that's a question from me. Um, da, 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 hold on. 
Oh, biggest impact player of the new signings. Who do you think the biggest impact player is of the new signings? Overall, I mean, it's Garrett Cole. Right. I think we haven't even seen what he can do, but we know what he can do, and we kind of saw him in spring training already, his potential. He had that one outing that wasn't great, but, you know, yeah. these guys always are working on something. So I think he's going to be huge for them. And I believe he and his wife have decided to stay here in Tampa as well. So he continually goes to the stadium. He's such a creature of habit. He's throwing uh, all the necessary days that he, that he needs to throw. As far as rain delays are concerned, do you yep. have one rain delay moment where you think this, this was one of the best shows we ever did? Was there one thing that stood out to you during one of the rain delays? Um, no, I think it's kind of weird. I think it depends on the content. I've told you this, when you get some stuff from the stadium for us, an interview with Boone or a pitching coach or something, it just adds that layer. Because I think what Jack and I or Jack Flash and I do from the the studio is great. And I, I like doing it. And I think the content is great. We have endless content that we can go to. But adding that layer from the stadium, because we're sort of away from it then. You know what I mean? We're waiting that game out. We all want to wait to get back there. And then so seeing some content from there is great. Now, having said that, it's weird because you would say, do you ever want to do two and a half to three hours of rain delay coverage? The simple answer would be no. Anybody <laughs> would say that. But when we get to that point where I think the show loosens up a little bit, we can have some fun. Like Jack and I have had the candy bowls on the set. We've, uh, I think we had for some rain delay, we had Buck Showalter. So we, you know, you bring up the old video of Buck doing something that, you know, you kind of throw him a curveball, something out of left field. Same with John Flaherty. Um, getting Jack to dig up some of his old stories that he covered. Mm -hmm. I love Jack, by the way. He, he's a research, instant research machine. He's like his own Google machine. Yeah. And we'll be talking about something he wrote about 20 years ago. And I don't know how, where he finds it. He does. And he'll be like, oh, yeah, I wrote that in 1995 on, you know, July 23rd. And it was this guy pitching. And it was, and he can then bring that up because he has like instant recall on everything. So he can bring that up and tell a 10-minute story about a certain game or a player or something like that. You mentioned Buck Showalter. He did a couple of games with you guys this year in the studio. Would yeah. you be willing to give a demonstration of how he watches a game as a broadcaster? Well, I could do it. Then I have to stand up and it would be weird. But imagine <laughs> this is me sitting at my desk just watching the game and eating dinner. And all of a sudden, I just kind of look right to my left. And Buck is standing right there because – he can't sit down. He'll sit down to eat really quickly, but then he's kind of standing by me. And then he kind of moves over and he's standing over by Flash. And then he moves back and he's asking questions. And it's because it's like he's on the, top the bench step. or standing yeah. up on the rail, the top yeah. rail, and he's got his pitching coach or his bench coach next to him. And they're having a conversation. Then he moves over to somebody else. And I mean, he's savvy. He'll look at, he'll watch a game and he'll go, do you see where that second baseman was positioned? You mind going back on that? And we'll look. Then he'll go, now, why was that guy there when this guy was throwing this pitch? And he just he picks it up like that. So it's interesting when he's in office and studio to watch the games with him. He's just an encyclopedia as well. Yeah. He sees things differently than a lot of people see them. Uh, if you had to pick one manager who would be the best manager out of the analysts at yes, who would you go with and why? And I can't do a tie, right? Uh, I mean, you. No, but yes, yeah, a very loose guidelines here on Insta Live. So you can really do whatever you like. And I may not no see you complain about it uh, until June or July. So. I mean, I think they both have the, the, the knowledge and the demeanor. It would be David Cohn and John Flaherty. That I mean, Cohn, I think, would, would be great. But Flaherty is so, knows everything about the game. Again, that catcher sees everything. And then. He can digest it. I think he, he would be good with younger and older players um, because he's sort of seen it from both aspects. He's sort of bridged maybe an era or a generation. So, And he's patient for the most part. Yeah. A little Irish in him, but for the most part, he's patient. Both so good to work with. Uh, I don't know. Let's see what else we have here. 
Somebody asked me the other day who I think the funniest person at Yes is, and I said you. Really? And you sometimes do some impressions and whatnot. Would you give us a Ron Burgundy? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Ron Burgundy. Okay. Hot <laughs> pot of coffee. <laughs> what else do you say? The arsonist had oddly shaped feet. Oh, come on, that's Bush League. <laughs> I haven't done it in a while. So I'm sorry. To do it again. I should have given you warning, but if you feel compelled to do it at any point in time for the rest of this, have I it. don't like it. <laughs> um, all right. If you had a foxhole, man or woman, at the Yes Network, who would it be? Who would you want to be in a fox? Stuck in a foxhole with? How how bad is how bad are the rockets flying overhead? <laughs> In a foxhole, somebody at yes. Yes. Who's your foxhole, man or woman? Guy or gal? It's, it's, it's Jack or it's Flash. The toss up. Yeah. You're smart, man. Who would be is can I can I bounce that back on you? Who would you be for your foxhole person? I think it would actually be and this is no disrespect to anybody else, because I love everybody yeah. I work with, you know this, right? Uh, probably David Cohn. Really? Yeah, Coney. Because I think he could be, you know, he'd be a little feisty, but he'd fight yeah. for you. And he's a good dude. He, he yeah. can think his way out of the foxhole, talk right. to people, or he can just fight his way out. And then when that doesn't work, he'll, he'll get just get crazy, right? No, but there's yeah. so many, there's not a bad choice when it comes no. to that. No. What is this here? Let's see what we've got going on here. Not K. Uh oh. We have some Michael K lovers that. Are upset that we didn't choose K, but I feel like I'm pretty K, sure the K wouldn't have picked us either. So never, he wouldn't have I, I picked us, bad. nor would he want to be in the foxhole. He'd be like, "No, not for me." Like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna go wait over here. You guys go in the foxhole. Go ahead. Yeah, right. Uh, anything else on your uh, on your mind, Bob? Um, no. I just think you know, like like Meredith, you said earlier, like you're, you're going out for a walk. You're kind of. You know, we'll occasionally just hop in our car and go for a drive around town just to kind of get out so you're not so stir crazy. You're in your, unless I'm missing something, you're in your safe little bubble, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The windows up and drive around. And it's nice that the sun's coming out. It makes you a little happier and gets you, gets you a little more motivated, I think. Um, but that's it. I think, I think we, we we'll, should probably do a lot more of this and engage more and keep people. You know, the one thing I was thinking about, Meredith, and I don't know how you feel about this because we're having some fun with this. Um, I've thought about sending out a couple, like, sort of fun tweets or something. Like, like five days ago, it should have been, like, please shave day. <laughs> <laughs> I looked like a mangy old prospector. You know, I don't have the 80s Miami Vice Don Johnson look anymore when I have, like, four or five days. It's just I look like I just – came out of a foxhole after a month or something. Um, but then you, there's so many people that have such different views. You know, I think still having a sense of humor in these moments, you have to have, you have to have that levity and that fun. And what are you going to do? I mean, it is what it is, but then you think social media is what it is and you don't want those people saying, well, this is a crisis. Why are you joking around? The point I'd like to make is that you have to, it's not joking at anything. It's having fun and keeping your sanity. Right. And that's why, you know, if you asked me today, you know what, it was funny, Meredith? Did you see the thing where trending lately is all the contagion type of movies? Yeah. Like that would be the last thing I would want to no, watch right you. now. Like yeah. give me a comedy, give me something good. You know, hey D, what did we watch? What did we rent the other day at one movie? Oh, shoot. I, I would recommend, by the way, Knives Out, if you haven't seen it. No, but somebody else told me about that. I don't know. What, what is it about? Uh, so it's about, it's Daniel Craig is not James Bond. He plays oh. this Southern private investigator who helps this murder mystery at an estate in, I believe it's New England somewhere. And all the kids stand to inherit from the dad who was the death victim. That's just what I'll call him. Um, and it involves the housekeeper, Anna de Armas. So well written, so many twists and turns, a lot of great moments of kind of like funny little moments that make you laugh. And Daniel Craig was terrific. He, he played Mr. Benoit Blanc. It's good to see you, sir, Mr. Benoit Blanc. He solved the case. I like to 
make all the pieces come together. So you see Daniel Craig doing that, and you're like, whoa, what? Is what? This, right? But so different. It's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, so so I guess you can see what an impact that movie I had the other night was, because we can't even remember what it was when you read it. <laughs> Somebody wants to know what your favorite comedy movie is. Oh, gosh. Um, probably Anchorman, uh, Going Back a Ways, uh, Blazing Saddles is very funny. Uh, anything with Bill Murray, Caddyshack, uh, Stripes. Those would all rank up on the, the top of the list. You know, if you're, or if you're flipping around and all of a sudden you come upon it, you just stop and you watch for yeah. a while. Yeah. I like all the Will Ferrell movies. How about you? But I like the Will Ferrell Will Ferrell? But any of those. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, like the Ace Ventures, the Jim Carrey movies. Who else? Like Dumb and yes. Dumber. I love that movie. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Now I only pretty much watch what Delta shows. Delta or United. Those are the two airlines I typically fly. So if it's yeah, on yeah. there, then I've seen it. If it isn't, I don't know what you're talking about. So. You, know what's, you know what's funny you say about comedies overall? If that's a movie, TV shows, my son got me back on it. I watched a few episodes, and I was kind of like, eh, uh, Bob's Burgers. You ever uh, seen that? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then Family Guy, obviously. And then Rick and Morty has become like a real go-to show. Like, uh, it's... Yeah, horrifically, it's it is definitely an adult cartoon. But what's funny about that is those are three shows that I watch to get a laugh out of. My wife is like, "You and your cartoons." I'm like, "They're cartoons, but they're not cartoons. <laughs> they're adult you know, cartoons. They're like, it's okay." Yeah, they're adult cartoons. Uh, somebody just said yeah. Adam Sandler movies. I'm sorry, I actually met yeah. Adam Sandler in the booth at Yankee Stadium. How could I leave out? Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison. Two oh, classes, of course. Of course. Yeah. Happy Gilmore is definitely, yeah. And if you're that looking for fun. more adult cartoons, there's one on uh, Netflix. Big Mouth, have you seen that? Yes. That's yeah, I saw, I saw the first few episodes of that. A little Nick appropriate. That. <laughs> yeah, very good. You know, what uh, a, you know what a show to go back to that you might like? Did you ever see The League? It had Nick Kroll yes. in it. Yes. I, I that's did. a very funny Show. And it's not on the air anymore. You'd have to find it somewhere on one of the streamers, but that's a very good show as well. There's so much. Mike Medvin, who is our tape operator for our games, actually put out a list of shows that he wishes he had never seen before because he'd like to go back and watch them like it was the first oh. time. And it was The Sopranos, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The Wire, West Wing, and there was one other one. I forget. I haven't seen any of those, Bob. I've got a lot of work to do. I've seen none of those. I've seen a little bit of West Wing, never saw The Wire, saw some of The Sopranos, but didn't get into it like other people. So you might need to, yeah. Yeah. You now, have some free time on your hands. I know, right? When, when, you, when you're not spending time putting the uh, garbage disposal in, maybe you can watch those. You know what, though? Here's the funny thing, too. The social calendar is actually filling up a little bit. I have oh, good. virtual... You're kind of wigging out on me. Oh. I had to go because somebody, no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, even though you're not with somebody, it's kind of cool that now in 2020, you can interact this way. So I still get to see yeah. your lovely face. Yes. No, that's great. And uh, and I get to see yours and everybody else's. And I also, do you, ever, you do words with friends with anybody? Or I used to. I should get back in on that. Yeah. I, I do words with friends with my two sisters and my son. And then we do Yahtzee together. And my niece, and then we do Yahtzee together as well. So Any, I'm getting uh, a lot of notifications, Meredith, that Amazon has delivered several packages. <laughs> oh, oh, what did you order? <laughs> That's tomorrow on Insta Live. Bob opens packages. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I will not open it till tomorrow, and we'll have a big reveal. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know what? It's, it's a lot of Nespresso coffee pods. Oh, yeah. nice. Nice. I made my own cold brew the other day. I don't even did recognize you? myself anymore. <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, I didn't. I didn't want to go out to get coffee, and I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to try this. So I bought a French press, and then I made cold brew through that. 
And is that the last time you've used the French press, or are you? It was the first, but it won't be the last. It'll be the last. Good. I have like Good. this much left in the fridge, so I gotta make more. So. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. saying, guys, I'm sad because of the lack of baseball. This is a nightmare. It is a nightmare, but you know this what? Is a nightmare. Point... This is a nightmare. This is a nightmare, but no baseball is a nightmare. <laughs> yep, baseball's behind Meredith. That's what counts. Yeah. That's a nice bookcase. You got Thank some good you. stuff. The little Macho Man. Yes, it's the Tampa Tarpons Macho Man. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, we've got. I a, interviewed I him way back in the day. Back in I don't the think 80s. She, I don't think she looks like me, but. Now. We have, I don't know if you've seen this in the office, because I'm trying to remember if you came in for a hot stove. Somebody made one of us, uh, me, Flash, and Jack on the set, little bobblehead thing, and then yeah. you were off to the side. Oh, I didn't see that. And I was like, oh, it didn't, yeah. Well, you wouldn't have recognized it. <laughs> the first one, we all had like brownish orange faces. It was very odd. And I, I think always... we were all wearing like brown suits or something, yeah. No. They always yeah. come out weird, I feel like. They never really look like the person. You'd think they'd be able to do a better job in this yeah. day and age. Yeah. Hey, I got something for you. So I'm sitting here drinking life water. That's not an endorsement, by the way. We just drink it here. And you have Topo Chico, by the way. Where did you get on that? Uh, I don't know. how. It was in my fridge. And there's a sparkling water shortage Right. At my household right now, I did not buy enough because I didn't want to be one of those hoarders. So when I went to the grocery store, Good. I got two little things of Pel Pellegrino, which I would normally just like any other time, probably get like five because I drink it all the time. Yeah. Um, but this, I found this rogue one. This is my last sparkling water. Is that, oh, that's too bad because that Topo Chico, and you can find it at Walmart, by the way, because I've looked for it. Um, good. It's a really good mineral, like it's a little sparkle mineral water that has a lot of like minerals in it yeah so i like it this is my first it. first time having it and i will get more it's delightful yes delightful every <laughs> time i say the name i think of that scene with uh tim allen from uh what's the christmas movie he's in a blanking on it set the oh, santa, santa claus, claus? yeah what he goes Popo Shisho. <laughs> i think of topo chico yeah Oh, I like that movie, man, back in the day. Now, did you did you draw the portrait behind you over your right your right? <laughs> yes. Did you yeah, that was, hand, that was hand drawn by me. <laughs> that is the kids. That's Tyler and Madison when they were about seven and three. Maybe, yeah, eight, maybe eight and four. Yeah, little fancy blue blazer on the dude. Little Christmas dress on Madison. Yeah. Aww. And now they're almost 30 and 25. So, yeah. Oh gosh, crazy. Crazy. Yeah. And they didn't want to come home and get quarantined with you guys? No. Ty's going to work. He's working from home. He's doing oh. He's locked down in his part of, like, uh, L.A. And and she's in Huntington Beach right now. But, you know, just to get out of L.A. because everything's locked down there. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, but they're, they're fine. They're doing good. You know? Good. He, like us, we had a little conversation with Tyler last night. He's a little stir crazy as well. Like the walls kind of close in on you and everything's shut down around him. So it's the same thing. Just so we said, get out, take a drive, take a walk, whatever. Well, we're all in the same boat. We're all in it together. We hope everybody yeah. remains safe uh, and everybody at the Yes Network is doing okay if anybody's watching. And any suggestions on who I should get on this tomorrow? I mean, have you given Jack or Flash a... Not yet. A ring to see what they're up to? You are guest number three. I, I would try. I, I really liked, I didn't get a chance to see the Sarah one, which can I go back and watch that? I, I don't know if I'm. That one I didn't record properly, so I couldn't oh. save it. Okay. But Susan. I did see about a third of Susan's, yeah. John. You're, you're breaking up, you're breaking up. Oh, sorry, you're breaking up on me again. What happened? You froze on me again. Reboot. Got me? <laughs> uh, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, there you go. Now I got you. Uh, so John Sterling actually called, just so happened to call Susan on her landline phone while we were doing really? the thing. And Susan uh, answered and goes, it is John. I go, that's probably John. Kidding. And she answered. She goes, it is John. So then we put him on speakerphone. And oh he, was, he was able to provide the people with a nice little home run call. So that, that is yeah. classic. So did, did he do one of his one of his regular ones, you mean? 
He did an A bomb for A Rod. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He hasn't been able, he had to kind of pull that one out of the mothballs. He hasn't been able to say that in a little bit. So. I know. He must have been sitting on it for a while. He got it yeah. up pretty good. And we gave people a little taste of some baseball normalcy. So That's yeah. great. And I, I do follow Susan, too. So while you're very active on Instagram and stuff, nice to see her cooking up that chicken soup. And yeah. is she going to post the recipe for it? Or is it just, maybe it's just Susan style. Like, what about what do I have? Throw it in yeah. the pot and see what happens. That's a good question. I have to ask her about that. No, I think it's probably a recipe. And she also made homemade dog treats the other day. I, I did see that part too. And I get a kick out of that because just to show her sort of um, the way she works, she made them in the shape of dog bones. And she even <laughs> admitted like, just because I'm, you know, a little crazy that way, but she's a good mommy for her dogs. No she, doubt about it. She's an awesome dog mom. Uh, are you becoming a professional chef during this quarantine? You know what? We are cooking a lot more. But, but we're finding that balance between we want to support local businesses, too, to keep them kind of going. And we don't want to deplete everything we have because we don't know how long this is going to go. But we did stock up on stuff. My, my wife is a far better cook than I am. I can throw something on the grill or make chili. It's about it. You, fro you froze on me again. What's happened? <laughs> you got me? <laughs> yeah, I got you again. Uh, I just said I, I, I have been cooking, but I hate having to clean all the dishes down. That sucks. Yes. I'm not in on that. Well, I don't know if you're down with this, but Donna has a really good plan that I don't follow and I take forever to cook. She, As she cooks, she cleans. Oh. So at the end of the meal, there's like maybe two things in the sink, and it's like, boom, done. Here, I thought you were going to suggest a house husband, and I like your idea way better. I do have sort of that, I don't know if you'd call it a sous chef. Like, <laughs> yesterday, I cut up some jalapenos. We had a Thursday taco night. Oh, nice. So I cut up the jalapenos. I cut up uh, some other things. And then um, as she cleaned and stuff was thrown in the sink, I wiped it down and put it away. So I know the drill. I'm the number two. <laughs> <laughs> but you're number one to all of us at the Yes Network, Bob. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't cry. On that thank note, you. thank you for joining <laughs> me today. It's good to see your face. You too, Meredith. Have a great night and a great right. weekend. You too. Stay see safe. you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us.